Shut up and sit down. I feel like Zimmer watching the preseason game. For God's sake! <laughs> Can we cover the screen? Can somebody cover the screen? <laughs> what are you doing? Mackenzie, catch the ball! <laughs> Treadwell, wake up on the sidelines. Pay attention! Good God, Bar, you're slower than a hillbilly doing math. Move with some speed. <laughs> oh! Mm-hmm. Another great week. Only ah. this time we have a special guest. And that special guest is the one, the only from Daily Norseman around the Vikings blogosphere, who you know as the purple buckeye, Mr. Ted Glover. How you doing, Ted? Good. You're about to be disappointed, but thanks for having me on your show. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> What are you up to? Ted Glover! <laughs> what up, Ted Glover? N- nice shirt. Nice hat, Drew. Like yeah. that one, just for you, baby. Yeah, Look I figured as much. Yeah. Down to the victors. Yeah. Smells like fourth place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let it begin. Let the smack talk begin. Well, it's just like the Chicago Bears and the NFC North, right? Hey, did you see? Did you see Adrian Peterson signed with the Redskins? I did. Yeah. Isn't that isn't that ironic? All right. Sure. I mean, yeah. We'll see how that goes. Good for him, I There's guess. My bird. What's your well, bird's that... name? Pardon me. Your bird's name? Princess. That's princess. Hi, princess. She's twenty-two, and she's an umbrella cockatoo. Hey, I rhyme. Wow. But she's well, old enough to drink. Right? I'm a poet, and I didn't even know it. Nice. So how did you become an Ohio State fan? Fall off of a truck and bump your head? How did it go? Well, that, that happened first. But, uh, but I, was, I, moved to, I lived in Minnesota. grew up in Minnesota until I was 15. Right. Uh, went to live with my dad, who was in the process of moving from Chicago to Columbus. So moved to Columbus, uh, finished high school there. Actually went to Ohio State for a year. Um, before I, uh, I needed a change in direction as it were and, uh, enlisted. Wow. Yeah. That's, ended up in Columbus. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I actually drove through there on my way back from, uh, I hadn't been there in like 20, 20 some years and like two weeks in a row, I drove through there on, on my way to different places in Ohio. So yeah, cool. There you go. Well, That's the way it goes. Get, get ready. It's this Thanksgiving, we're going to beat you this year, finally. So I'll have to be able to hang my hat. <laughs> no, you're not. I'll be able to hang my hat on that. Urban Meyer's yeah. jock strap. Could I ask coach Jim Harbaugh? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, Dave's probably got some questions for you. All right. Well, Good to I'll have see. you on. Good to finally meet you, buddy. Yeah, same here. Thanks, uh, thanks for inviting me. really appreciate it. Speaking of enlisting, Ted, you have a unique story. You didn't go through the traditional uh, route a normal military veteran takes. Tell us about how yours was different. Oh, man, nobody cares. But I was enlisted for like (laughs) three years, and then uh, I became an Army warrant officer. And uh, flew CH 47s as a warrant officer for like 10 years. And then uh, um, the Air Force had this thing called the pilot bonus, where they gave pilots a lot more money than the Army did. Uh, I heard about this way to get back into the Air Force. Um, so it was like a purely mercenary move just to make more money. Um, so 
uh, I ended up flying, coming back into the Air Force and finishing my career back in the Air Force from once I started flying helicopters uh, and then kind of doing staff stuff to, to, to finish it off. Well, we appreciate your service. Thanks. Oh, yeah. You gave, you gave Gloria Stefan a ride. I did. Yeah. Yep. Flew her in uh, uh, right after Hurricane Andrew. Sure did. Was she was she meow meow? Yeah. She's, you know, <laughs> back then. I mean, it's like, dude, this is like 1992, man. Yeah. Sure. Uh, that's killer, dude. Well, I had yeah. to make sure that I'd heard that. I'd heard that through the grapevine, that little tidbit. So I wanted to drop it on you and get the full skinny from you, the originator. Yeah. So Yeah. We flew her from... Uh, from Miami down to like down by where um, most of the hurricane damage had occurred. So yeah, that was pretty cool. That right on, cool. man. One day, teach me how to fly a helicopter or something. You don't want me to teach that. It's been like 15 years since I've been in a helicopter. I'd kill us both <laughs> inside of 30 seconds. Uh, okay, I'll pass. Me being an aircraft mechanic can vouch for that. Shut up. <laughs> Stop liking. Yes, yeah, so let's talk Vikings. There was a game. Let's talk Saturday, Vikings. And I'm curious of your impressions on said game. You know, I don't take a whole lot of in preseason games, honestly. I. I, I mean, it's important for uh, player evaluation, and if you got guys fighting for certain roster spots, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't care for the the execution of the first team offense, or as um, John McKay would have said from USC days, what was your what was your opinion on the execution of the offense? Yeah, I'm all for it, or whatever. <laughs> um, um, but overall, I mean, it was you know. It was a good defense they were playing, and, and the thing the thing I always try to remember about preseason games like that is they don't game plan, they don't watch film, they focus on what they're trying to do as an offense, uh, and they they take away from that. I, I I was I kind of enjoyed the the battle between Rock Thomas and Mike Boone. I thought the defense played pretty well. Um, the guys we were looking at on offensive line that could maybe come in and, and fill some some back end depth or possibly start a left. For the most part, played okay. I mean, I think Collins, I don't think he played great as a tackle, but he did okay as a guard. So, I mean, there's a lot of positives to take away, minus all the sloppiness of the preseason games that we generally get and the uh, ridiculous new penalties that the NFL is starting to call. <laughs> penalties that the NFL is starting to call. Uh, <laughs> I was going to ask you about that. What is a tackle? You What's know, a legal tackle. I have no idea anymore. I've kind of ranted about this on Twitter and and on Daily Norseman when I'm writing. But back in the beginning of the month, when when the NFL came out with these new tackling rules, we've gotten to the point in the NFL where the core tenets of the game, people aren't sure what they're about. I mean, when baseball was going through all their struggles with uh, the steroid era and the kind of the weird stuff Bud Selig was doing at least the core of the game was still the same. A hit was a hit. Uh, a run was a run and out was an out. You, you could argue whether they were legitimate on, you know, peds and all that, but the, the game itself was still enjoyable to watch. Football is messing with basic concepts of their game, like how to tackle and how you catch a football. And, and it's really, if, if the judgment or the, the opinions I'm reading on Twitter and in, in different pieces on, on, the internet are accurate. It's really frustrating for the players and for the fans. And and we can talk about the national anthem and, and all that controversy. I really don't want to, but it's your show. Um, but if anything is going to ruin the game of football, it's going to be the inability to understand what a tackle is for the players and what a catch is. And it's going to make the games unwatchable. <clears throat> meow, meow. That's I Absolutely truthful. You could see the frustration on Drew's face there momentarily. It's 
it's got me shaking my head at many of those. What's called, what's not called, what is, what is not, you know, and it's just like, oh, you know, we grew up in a different age. Yeah, we're the old timers on this network. And it's just like, that doesn't look right. Sendejo's attitude of bring violence back to the game again. I understand. I am all for player safety. I want them wearing all the new viscous helmets. I want them to do all the stuff to keep them protected. I want them to use the best technique that keeps them safe. But it is still a very brutal, demanding sport. You when Back in the day when we played, and all three of us played, you played in the game shape, and you learned to take a hit and give a hit and and stuff like that. That was part of growing up. You started that in Pop Warner on up. And you got to where you're good. Now, none of us ever reached anywhere close to the level that these guys are at. But it's much the same thing. It's the same concepts. And you take that away, and it's going to cause ire between the fans and the league and confusion on the defensive line. All I can envision is Daniil Hunter going in, wrapping up on Aaron Rodgers. And basically giving him a bear hug, holding him up above the ground so he can't move, looking over to the umpire and going, are you going to throw the flag or blow the whistle? And he's not going to blow the whistle. And he shakes his head, no, I'm not. Then Daniil getting upset, taking him, turning him sideways, and slamming him into the turf. Whoop! Off goes the whistle, off goes the flag. Daniil gets ejected. And it's like, what is he supposed to do? It just, to me, the NFL needs to focus on what is illegal and what is legal and allow the players to mold themselves to what is legal and not be this wishy-washy, whatever I feel like today mood is going to get the flag because it was raining yellow on Saturday, and that was frustrating. It slows down the game. It's sloppy. And it makes for bad entertainment. And the NFL is an entertainment business. Sports, professional sports is for entertainment. And it's just, it, it blows my mind that a multi billion dollar industry makes bad decisions like that. But I'll get off my soapbox. You know, my thing is the way they teach guys, um, they, you're taught. You're taught to not lead with your head, but with your head up. And I, I think what they're asking a lot of defensive players is to to defy the laws of physics. I mean, the whole all or most of the weight of the body landing on a player is just absolutely ridiculous. To the point, um, Antoine Williams didn't land with most of all of his weight on on the quarterback. The, there was a play in San Francisco where the player fielding a punt, he he was going to make a tackle. He actually dropped to a knee, led and tackled and, and brought the guy down and it was called a penalty. I, I mean, I, I think you're going to have guys letting up and it's going to eventually lead, going to be more detrimental and lead to more injuries than, than it, than it's actually trying to prevent. But that's just me. 49er play. Yeah. 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 The 49er game. Coach Zimmer was asked that exact same question today at his press conference. Will the letting up lead to more injuries? And his response was, well, he didn't think so, but it's definitely causing confusion, but it may. So I, I, I have a question, and I'll defer it back to you guys because you guys know more about the law than I do. Uh, I'm just married to a lawyer. She doesn't teach me anything. <clears throat> um, can't you just have these guys sign a waiver when they come in to the league? I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think we'd be at this point if the NFL took care of their ex-players. Um, I don't think well, we'd be at yeah, this no, point. No, no. 
when they when they come in to get hired to get employment by the NFL, can't they just stand and sign a piece of paper saying this is what you're getting yourself into? You have to play at your own risk. I mean, is that a possibility? So we could just go back to playing football and everybody's every man for himself, whatever happens, happens. I mean, why can't we just have signatures and sign something? I mean, I don't get it. Mike Florio talks about on his podcasts on the creation of alternate leagues, whether it be by the wrestler type or the other one, that if any league goes back to the rules of the 80s, where football, like we really liked it with the big hits, that they would have to do a waiver system that you signed on knowing that football can cause you extreme bodily harm and affect your life the rest of your life. But you would hope in signing that waiver that part of that waiver is that as a league, we agree to take care of you medically the rest of your life, unlike what the NFL's done. And I think that's where you were referring to, Ted. If they would have, you know, all along taken care of the players as they've gotten older and when they have medical issues, you wouldn't have. I mean, there may have been a more of an effort for the safety, but you wouldn't have such a one bad PR, but two disconnect in you know, players that played in the past versus the impression the league office and teams give now. I just thank God that we have the Wilfs as our owners and they've embraced our former players. Yeah. You know, I mean, and we've gotten smarter too. We've learned a lot more about head injuries and CTE and stuff like that. And there's, there's no reason why the NFL can't, uh, and and do something you know there's there's been stuff you know with the lawsuit and settlement and, and all that but I, I i think if the if the nfl embraced i would argue their responsibility to former players who play the game yeah there's you accept risk i mean you accept risk is just about everything you do in life um but there should also be a thing at the other end that says if you accept this risk for us now we'll we'll handle certain things later when it comes to a point where the risk you incurred is now affecting your life in, in such a manner that it needs attention. I totally agree with that. That's the way it should be. Now, moving on from this semi-depressing topic, let's talk about a more upbeat topic. You made it depressing. It wasn't me. <laughs> right? You're the host, awesome, man. I know. You're the, down, the downer. Um, it wasn't nothing to do with me. Let's right, go talk ahead. about go ahead. what we <laughs> expect of the Minnesota Vikings in the 2018 season. What do you foresee, Mr. Ted? You know, they, they didn't bring Kirk Cousins in to, to go one and done as a wild card. Meow, meow. Um, you know, I've I've read a lot, and I don't know if I necessarily agree with it, that if Kirk Cousins doesn't win a Super Bowl, the whole Kirk Cousins era will be a failure. But that said, you know, they've got a top 10 offense coming back. And the only only position they've upgraded or or changed, if you will, is quarterback. And that's at least a push, if not an upgrade. And then running back because Dalvin Cook's coming back and he was out most of the year. They've got their entire defense coming back, minus Tom Johnson, who they upgraded with Sheldon Richardson, for goodness sakes. They have one of the coaching staffs in the league, I would argue. Uh, they've got a schedule that, while difficult, I would argue they're probably going to be favored in 11, 12, if not 13 games. You know, this is a team – that should not only win the NFC North, but get a first round buy, if not home field advantage. You need a lot of luck after that. I'm not saying you don't, but I mean, this team is, is built to win now and for the next couple of years. So I'm expecting big things. What do you think? Well, Drew? everything that you just mentioned, 
everything everything that Ted just mentioned, Ted, that's exactly why the pressure's on Kurt Cousins. Pressure's on because we have a good team. Good teams are supposed to do well. Um, yeah. I, I mean, team 40, 40 years. Yeah, I, I would argue that as well. I, I mean, I'd agree with that as well. I, I mean, I, I don't think we've had a team this complete that we knew going into the season since the Purple People Eaters. 98 team was a pretty good team, but I don't think anybody that until the first two or three games of the season. I would argue we had high expectations for the 2010 team when, when Favre decided to come back. But, I mean, we kind of knew going in year in and year out in the 70s that the Vikings were going to be really sure. good. Sure. I agree. And they will be again because we're going to come into that dynasty version, too, that we had in the 70s, which in this day and age of free agency is amazing. And there's only been one team that's been able to do it for any extended amount of time, and we know who that is. The Green Vikings' Day. biggest problem the last four years have been beating themselves. There's yeah, people, we, we beat ourselves. We beat ourselves a lot of time. You know, the, a couple seasons ago, that game at home against the Lions when we just handed thing. Um, the last four or five plays just fell apart. And Ted also resides within our group, as you know, the Gallahorn group, and we appreciate his attendance. And participation there, as we always do. And Ted, you've been a real friend of the show, and I appreciate it. Even though you've been the butt of many of my jokes. Yeah, my beer does not stink, by the way. I, I drink good beer. It's mostly amber ale anymore. Good Lord, man. <laughs> oh, it's that pumpkin fruit not i don't drink pump, i don't drink any of that stuff where, oh, where you, is this you, this, is you defamation, used to. this is defamation of my beer drinking character no i have not that's not true it's wildly inaccurate anyways i want to thank you for coming on um the folks that watch the show thank you for coming on and see you ted see you drew <laughs> hope the buckeyes lose Go over the three to start the season. <laughs> they won't, but okay. <laughs> but as closing, is there anything you want to say? Uh, Skull Vikes, man. If, if, it's, if it ever was going to happen, I mean, ever, if ever it was going to happen, you got to. I'm feeling good about this team. I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to jinx it, but I mean, this is as complete a football team. As I can remember this team, as the Vikings having since, like we were talking about, since the 70s. I agree. So Go Vikings, everybody. All right, man. We'll see you later. See you next week.